pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Bayline? Present. Councilor Seattle? Here. Councilor Pedrina? Here. Councilor Hayes? Here. Councilor Rowan? Here. Councilor Chair Donovan? Present. Uh, a general public comment. Uh, anyone wishing to address the town council at this time on any matter that is not on the agenda otherwise should approach the podium in three minutes. State your name and address. Uh, my name is Bruce Flaherty. Uh, actually, with uh, in Augusta. Uh, the family owns some property at Pinewood Circle, so have some connections here to Scarborough. And uh, the reason in here is uh, asking uh, Scarborough to consider participating <coughs> in the Spirit of America Volunteer Recognition Program. This is a program that's very common throughout the counties of Enniscoggin, Kennebec, Lincoln, Sagat Hawk, Somerset, and Waldo counties. Uh, last year in those six counties, uh, <coughs> uh, virtually 80% of the towns participated in the program. This is the first year that uh, Cumberland County has been invited really to participate. And what happens is uh, there's no fee What's so I'm going, sorry. Oh, there's no fee whatsoever for involvement in this. Um, towns are asked to pick a person, project, or group to receive the Spirit of America Foundation tribute for outstanding community service. Uh, what should happen is that uh, the recognition should take place. Uh, in April, which is National Volunteer Month, or the uh, annual town meeting, which Scarborough would have. Uh, <coughs> here is a copy of uh, something similar to what Scarborough received. I can pass this around, and actually, you may keep this. And it uh, said pretty much the same information that Scarborough accepted. It said uh, town council instead of uh, board of select. Uh, so what's uh, the, the, the first and most important step is the recognition on the local level. This program started in the Gusty <coughs> uh, and the first one was presented in the early 1990s and the program has been expanded. So uh, at this point, questions for you. Great. Uh, uh, we'll be in touch with you. To uh, council will probably have the opportunity to discuss this at some point, make a decision as to do a little more investigation, uh, and then uh, be in touch to discuss it with you. So if you can leave us your contact information with the town manager. Yes, I have, Mr. President. Then uh, we'll be able to follow up. Thank you. Great, a pleasure. Thank you so much. Anyone else who would like to uh, address the town council at this time? Uh, minutes of June 15, 2016, regular meeting. I have a motion? Move approval. Second. Any comments or corrections to the minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Uh, adjustments to the agenda, none at this time. Treasurer's warrants. I'll sign at the end of the meeting. Uh, order 16-42, 7 p.m. public hearing and second reading for an amendment to the Town of Scarborough official zoning map to rezone the parcel located off of Southgate Road identified as map U37 lot 3A as shown on the Town Assessor's map from the General Business District called the B3 District to the Industrial District, I District. Uh, we'll ask uh, Karen Martin to introduce this so that people are again familiarized with what is being proposed by this change. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Karen Martin with the Scarborough Economic Development Corporation. And I'm here tonight presenting um, a request for the zone change by Mr. Raymond Labonte. Um, again, <coughs> as um, the chair said, 
It is to change a lot that actually is um, abuts a Lear and um, is on Southgate Road. It is a request to change from B3 to um, industrial. Um, the proposed project is going to be a building with uh, small units for small manufacturers to, to locate in. And the reason we need the change, or the reason uh, the change is being requested, is that under the B3 zone, um, small manufacturers really aren't allowed. And the types of, of uh, uses that I think were envisioned for this project were the small landscapers, small manufacturers, builders, that type of thing. And um, they fit much better in the industrial zone. And given that it already borders the industrial zone, it's just moving the line over one lot, it seemed to make a lot of sense from um, both the planning department and um, the Long Range Planning Committee and certainly for economic development purposes. Um, again, the proposal is to do a, uh, you know, one building with perhaps five different units in it. And I think originally I had said that Mr. Labonte was going to move his business in it. Um, I think I was more aggressive than, than he was. He, he, he may still stay in the Southgate unit, um, but he will be owning these five units. Um, so that whether Mr. Labonte um, moves his business there is, is still up in the air. Um, anyway, so it's a pretty straightforward zone change. Um, I'm happy to answer any <coughs> questions. And um, what's your pleasure? Uh, questions before we move beyond Karen? Karen, can you speak to the planning board? Absolutely. Thank you for reminding me. Yes, the planning board did review it. They held, held a public hearing. Um, during the public hearing, there were, um, there were no comments, but the planning board did discuss it. Um, and they unanimously supported the zone change. And uh, the planning board proceeding uh, comes with uh, notice to uh, all property owners who abut the it property in question? Traditionally it does not because it's a commercial project, but because there was a request, um, we did the extra effort um, to reach out to the um, abutters, so um, the SEDCO office sent out notices to all the property owners, <coughs> and then because I know there are some renters, um, you know, Max Deli and that, that um, strip center is, is really diagonally across from this. And I went out and delivered uh, personally some, some flyers that explained what the situation was. Good. Uh, Thank you. Other questions of Karen? Thank you, Karen. Uh, public comments? Uh, anyone wishing to comment on this matter, please approach the podium. Uh, may I have a motion? Move approval. Second. Uh, discussion. Councilor Keza. I just want to thank Karen for um, reaching out to the abutters. I do appreciate that. And, uh, um, I, I know it was a little extra step, so uh, I certainly do appreciate that. It makes me feel a lot better. Thank you. Other comments? Councilor Keza. Uh, yes, just a reminder, this was also discussed at length by Long Range Planning Committee, uh, and they were very enthusiastic about it. I'm very happy to hear that the planning board had no issues also. So. I will support this. Other comments? See none. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Order 16-43, a 7 p.m. public hearing and second reading for <coughs> uh, amendments to the Town of Scarborough Zoning Ordinance regarding multifamily housing allowances and standards in the town's residential districts. Again, I would ask Karen Martin to introduce this matter. Karen Martin with Scarborough Economic Development. I'm a poor substitute for Dan Bacon, who is uh, <laughs> unfortunately had an accident, so he is not able to be here tonight. Um, so this this project or the, the this proposal really is uh, similar to um, the proposal that you approved um, a few months ago with regard to the town and village center zone. And what it does is it takes um, some liberties with uh, our it, it actually allows the, um, more flexibility with respect to, to multifamily development within um, a few zones. And really what we're looking at are the village residential zones and the traditional neighborhood development um, overlay zones. And basically what we're doing is saying <coughs> let's take away this limit on the number of units that can occur in a building 
and let's limit the size and bulk of the building. And that's really um, more akin to some of the work even that, that was done down in Higgins Beach and talking about form. Um, so at this point, um, what the amendments do is say up to 7,500, you can have a 7,500 square foot building. You have to meet all the standards of the zone that are required. You have to meet the overall density um, within a project. But within that single building, we're not going to limit the number of units. <coughs> and that really provides some more flexibility um, for developers to do smaller units um, and really make their projects work um, you know, for the market. And that's the bulk of that. There are a few other housekeeping changes that are in there um, that you'll see that are really just um, really updating some consistency um, for the other units. But these changes um, do apply to the uh, Village Res Residential 2, BR4, and again, the traditional neighborhood development overlay. And these projects are, this proposal was reviewed at length by the Long Range Planning Committee. Lots of discussion about the role of uh, density and how these type of flexibility can, can really promote some more diverse types of development. At the planning board, there, were, um, there was great support of this project, so there were no negative comments and they um, approved this unanimously at the board. If I can answer any other questions? Questions of Karen? Actually, I just have a comment, and uh, again, being on long-range planning, Karen did a lot of work on this and brought forth a lot of um, um, good points. Some of the points being, again, since we were talking about affordable housing, um, is in the workshop that this will allow some flexibility for uh, developers to develop. Um, granted, they'll be market rate housing. Um, um, but it gives them some flexibility to do like a one bedroom, for example, or smaller two bedrooms or whatever whatever is necessary. It doesn't change the footprint of, of these buildings at all, which to me was the important piece. So, again, I will vote to support this. Thank you. Other comments? Thank you, Karen. Uh, public, anyone from the public who would like to address this matter, please approach the podium. I have a motion. Move approval. Second. Discussion. Uh, we discussed this matter at length uh, at first reading. Uh, it was uh, uh, strongly supported at that time. It appears to be a, an effective modification of our zoning to allow more flexibility, but yet without having any adverse impact on the size of the structures. Uh, and so uh, it seems to have been uh, well supported. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, old business, not at this time. New business, order 16 uh, 48. Act on the request for a mass gathering permit from Beach Ridge Speedway for a mass gathering permit for the Nitro Circus located at 70 Holmes Road, scheduled for Saturday, August 27, 2016. Keith Thurlow is here. He is the point person for mass gathering permits, so I think he'd be best to... Uh, Thank you, Chief. Yeah. If you would give us a little bit of a background on this. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The owner of Beecher Speedway, Andy Cusack, has uh, contracted with the Nitro Circus to come and put on a show in August. Um, they have submitted the typical mass gathering permit application process. It's been reviewed by staff. Um, there, we're really not anticipating much more of a crowd than would assemble during one of their normal busy uh, racing events. Um, and I submitted a memo that uh, recommends approval from staff for the permit tonight. Like just for the council and the public's benefit, what is the trigger for the mass gatherings? A thousand people in attendance or twelve hundred? I believe it's a thousand. Thousand. Good. Uh, uh, and uh, you find any order? Yes, everything's in order. There are some fine details that we haven't worked out yet, but uh, we've got a long-standing relationship with uh, the track and the, the uh, employee police officers every week for their normal shows, so we're going to be able to work through those details once we get the final uh, details from the Nitro Circus. That's what we're kind of waiting on. There's a couple of questions. Thank you. Questions for the Chief? 
Such a battery. Just out of curiosity, what the heck is nitro surface? Do you know? <laughs> Tom, would you like to speak? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. I'm going to be <laughs> My father in law is taking me. Uh, it, it's some sort of high octane uh, motorsport. Oh, okay. It involves. Uh, Sancho type. Of oh, okay. Motorcycle. I'm, sure, yeah. I'm sure people are asking that. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> this is kind of a, a hot button topic apparently lately. Um, this is permitting of uh, pyrotechnics and or fireworks including any associated fire personnel or apparatus requirements. I assume that's professional fireworks display, not individuals or am I that, mistaken? That's correct. We anticipate that the applicant is going to be coming in for a fireworks permit. Okay. Typically their shows do involve some proximate fireworks. Um, I don't believe it's going to be a display show similar to what Beach Ridge does for the 4th of July weekend events, but we anticipate some special effects or proximate stuff, and that would all be permitted under our display fireworks ordinance as a separate permit. Thank you. Good. Other questions of the chief? Thank you, chief. You're welcome. Uh, any member of the public who would like to address this uh, order, please approach the podium. I have a motion. Full approval. Second. Uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd just like to say I may not be attending, but I'm sure I'll hear it. <laughs> <laughs> you will. Uh, on a clear night, you do every right I, I do I do normally anyway. That's right. That's it. Uh, further comment? Uh, see none all in favor. Opposed? Thank you. Unanimous. Uh, standing special committee reports and liaison zone reports. Uh, Chris, can you step down? And well, I've already been advised to keep my comments very short, so <laughs> I will do that. Um, you have a piece of paper in front of you, compliments of Donna Bailey, the um, uh, school board chair, uh, fast facts from the NEA. Uh, it's basically looking at Maine in terms of teacher salaries, where mm -hmm. we're positioned in the rest of New England. Um, this was certainly something that she felt that was important to share with the council, um, so I offered to, to distribute that. It's also going to be going up on the school board's website as well, so if um, the public wants to look at it, it's, uh, it's an interesting read to say the least, I think. Um, no meetings uh, from the school board since then. Um, Superintendent Kuchenberger is, is on board now. She started, um, I believe, on July 28th. She will be giving a presentation to the board and the general public uh, about her introductory plan and what she, you know, how she plans to, to uh, come into the district. So looking forward to seeing that as well. Uh, Energy has not met yet. I think we're meeting in a week or two uh, to discuss um, a few things on the agenda. But so we have some to report after that. Thank you. Peter. Yeah, quite a few things. Um, I'll try to be brief. Also, um, from a committee point of view, the, the rules and policy committee did meet this month. They've been working on some amendments to the, to the policies and procedural manual, which will be renamed. Um, we've worked through that process. They're, they're just being drafted. We hope to bring it back to this group early September for action. So that's the next thing on our list to kind of take a look at too is we've started to take a look at that suggestion of a fund balance policy. So we'll be starting to work on that, you know, in August through the fall. Um, the senior group met. They've been pretty busy. Um, they are they're just some real quick announcements. They're still working through some of this. There has been the, the traditional Wednesday lunches that may be moving to Monday because they run into some issues with space where they are. They're trying to resolve that. They hope not to change it, but stay tuned for that. Um, they're thinking a little bit about kind of changing their committee structures and asking for volunteers. So if anybody's out there is interested in participating in the seniors group on some of these committees, and they're trying to break themselves out into four sort of working committees to make recommendations. One is on outreach. How do they kind of reach the community, different ways of communicating. The second one will be about membership. How do they, how do they reach more seniors? How do they get them engaged in, in the programs? Third will be about programs, and the fourth will be, as we talked about in the budget process, there is sort of a recreational facility sort of in works being proposed, looked at, so that's how they're going to kind of structure themselves. They're going to have a senior barbecue on August 23rd. And for those that are interested, they, they have made a change. Those with membership in the senior group for all of the Scarborough High School sporting events, the opening games, they will get free admission to the opening games and events. So just 
For those that are interested, then every on movie third Monday every month on 718 and 815, there there's movies. It'll be at 1:30 at the Scarborough High School Auditorium. Um, the other two committees that did meet just recently, the other night, and Tom did join us, um, was Coastal Waters and Harbor and Self Shellfish. And really, the conversation there was really trying to, as as, as we all know, trying to look at how we use our, our our assets as a community, our waterfronts, our working piers, our access to the water. Um, and, and actually, I think it was a pretty productive meeting. There's there's a spirit of compromise and trying to find ways that we can work together to honor allowing fishermen to be able to still have access, the commercial worker have access to the water so they can come and go on their boats and other things, while at the same time allowing recreational users to come down and use the waterways and other things. So um, it's been kind of a, a, a contentious conversation for a while, but I think we made some progress the other night. Tom, thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. I think it, it got us to a, at least a place to start moving forward. So thank you. And I think with that, that pretty much sums up. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Haver. Sure. Councilor Haver. Um, I, I, all I have to report on the Conservation Commission, we met Monday night for close to two hours, and what we're working on is, you recall we had a workshop uh, with the Town Council regarding vulnerability and resiliency of Scarborough and, and assets and whatever in Scar Scarborough. So what we're working on is um, exactly who we're going to talk to, when, and what the final results will look at. So it's more the process. So in August, our meeting is August 8th, I think. I'm talking off the top of my head. Um, but the uh, second Monday of August, and we will um, work more on that. But that's all I have to say. Thank you. Councilor Rowan. Uh, Scarborough Housing Alliance met. Um, we discussed a, a few issues, one being the, uh, the changes to the QAP, which we had the workshop about tonight, uh, or uh, which impacted the workshop that we had tonight. Um, <coughs> on the advice of um, some of the more knowledgeable members, we, we decided that there wasn't much point in um, uh, advocating for changes in that QAP because of the uh, the nature of the, the main housing alliance when they when they put out a proposal they don't change it um, so uh, that public hearing was uh, was in June um, and as expected they didn't make any changes um, we also discussed the um, providing some guidance to um, the developer at the Eastern Village uh, regarding um, his uh, or, or his partial fulfillment of his um, affordable housing uh, incentive um, density density incentive. Um, he is intending to um, uh, have some rental units, some of which will be market rate, and some portion of which will be uh, uh, affordable housing, uh, income qualified. Um, and so uh, that body is trying to uh, make suggestions about uh, what that means. Um, and that uh, the hope is to have that finalized at our next meeting. Um, as that project has to go back before the, the planning board. Um, SEDCO also met. Uh, we met jointly with <coughs> the planning committee and the long range planning committee over at um, Town and Country's new headquarters over on, um, let's see, Little Dolphin Drive. Uh, and we got a tour of the facility, which was the highlight. That is an amazing office building. And if you haven't seen it, I suggest you drive in and knock on the door. Um, it's very impressive. Um, but we also talked about, uh, so that actually took up a lot of time. We, we got a tour, we got a, uh, the, the CEO spoke to us for a little bit, and we had a nice conversation. Um, he actually is a long-term, his family is a long-time Scarborough resident. Um, and then we also talked about Hagus Parkway um, as a larger group, um, and we're still muddling about what we can do there. Thank you. Thank you uh, for giving me the time. Uh, really quick notes. First, library trustees actually are um, have part of the summer off. Their next meeting is not until August, in which they are going to be hopefully finalizing uh, their strategic plan. And uh, their goal is to provide us with a copy, of make a, maybe make a presentation um, in the fall. Um, Eco Maine is, has the summer off, but uh, um, they're going to be facing some challenges and change in leadership as well as some uh, uh, market issues. So uh, that's going to be important to us regarding solid waste. I'll keep you up to date on that. 
And last, on finance, um, July, we've decided to take off, I believe, August. Um, we haven't set a date yet, but the two dates are either the 10th or the 24th. I think uh, we're shooting probably for the 24th, but the time will change. We were having them at 4 o'clock, but my schedule doesn't allow that, so they will be at 6 o'clock on, that, on you know, that Wednesday, and we'll get back to work. I'm also reaching out to the joint uh, to the school board so that we can close out last year's progress that we made on the budget and begin next or next cycle. Very good. Uh, I uh, attended the SEDCO meeting as well with uh, Council Rowan. Uh, the Town and Country Credit Union building is uh, a little bit disguised uh, back there. Uh, uh, people don't really realize that it's there, but it's a, a very modern interior design. Uh, every partition is removable and easily relocated. Uh, it really was built to uh, continuously meet the needs of uh, businesses. And it's a bit of a model. Uh, uh, many visitors have been going and uh, uh, seeking to see what's being done there. So it's a very interesting uh, concept. Uh, town manager's report. Yes, a couple quick updates if I could. Uh, I've been using my <coughs> time since you last met, really doing housekeeping, you know, closing out the fiscal year, getting things started up for the new year, uh, where there's a flurry of bidding activity for all the capital equipment and vehicles which is uh, in full, full form right now. Also a lot of recruitment's happening uh, by virtue of the, the budget approval. So it's a, it's a busy time. Uh, it's quieter by way of phone calls and email, but it's busy nonetheless. I want to give a couple of construction updates. Uh, our black white road resurfacing project is done, but for a little final striping, and Councillor Hayes pointed out uh, an improvement we might be able to catch before they do that, so I'll get on that in the morning. And then the Oak Hill pedestrian improvement project is largely done and operational. There's a, a, a couple of fine tunes yet to go, but the heavy lifting is done. The big one I want to make uh, you and the, and the public aware of is Cummings Road. If anyone's traveled that area, uh, this is the area uh, behind Target, if you will, on your way to Westbrook. Uh, this is a joint project between Scarborough and South Portland. Uh, the project limits essentially are from Payne Road all the way through the Rowing Hill Road intersection up to Gannett Drive in South Portland, actually in Westbrook at that point. Um, this project will be resurfacing in certain areas, but in the low point, if you can picture going over the, uh, the bridge deck there, over the turnpike, there's a very low point to, as you move up toward the Target entrance, that's going to be filled in about three feet, so they're going to take that low point out of it. And much of that work will be occurring next next week. We expect that base pavement down by the end of July, uh, but until then there's likely to be one lane traffic. So traffic will always be allowed through, you'll have to wait your turn. Uh, Maine Turnpike Authority is doing all sorts of works on, on bridge decks and ramps all over southern Maine, so just beware. Um, the, I have been in touch with Councillor um, Rowan. There's some work <laughs> over at the Two Rod Road overpass, uh, and there's potentially some noise issues that may affect folks in close proximity. So hopefully it doesn't disrupt too much. Also, uh, really spawned from complaints or comments we received here at Town Hall, and also discussions with uh, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Catarina, and St. Clair. We put together a very quick poll on fireworks, and this was intended really to kind of get a sense of what the community is thinking, uh, whether this materializes into anything in front of ordinance or otherwise remains to be seen, but clearly we've touched a nerve. Uh, there's been really tremendous response. This went up middle of the afternoon on Friday, and as of 4 o'clock this afternoon, we have 730 respondents. Uh, it is quick and dirty, I will admit. Uh, it's two questions. We do not limit the number of times you can take it. And that's done really because, uh, you know, we're not requiring them to, to give us their, their email address and those sorts of things. I do have the ability of looking at, I don't have uh, email addresses, but I know when people are taking, taking it. And you can, you can see a pattern. There are certain cases where people will take it multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, uh, just the quick takeoff at this point, and we'll let it run for a bit longer, but it's about a 60-40 in terms of 60% think that the current ordinance is not adequate, and about 40% think it is. And then for those that don't think it's adequate, we ask a number of uh, questions uh, so as to get a sense of 
and why is it inadequate? So as soon as we have um, more results, probably another week or 10 days perhaps, uh, we'll try to make some sense of this and I'll share it around uh, to see if council wants to do anything with it. Uh, also, we're advised today that uh, six plover chicks are running about Higgins Beach. I don't know if it all happened on one day. It found it two, days. two days. Um, and I think we are uh, past the, the, the egg laying and uh, portion of pine point as well. So chicks are abound. Uh, this, there's still some a reason for concern, but uh, they're at least mobile at this point. Um, Two final things. Thank you for the meeting accommodation. I'll be on vacation next week. Our meeting would have been next Wednesday, and I very much appreciate Councilor St. Clair. She, this is her week of vacation, and, uh, and uh, she agreed um, with the accommodation. And I want to welcome Tracy Cole, uh, who's who's learning the <laughs> tools of the trade, um, <laughs> and she picked a good meeting to be at. I think. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, why don't we start down this end with Councilor Cullen. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's summer, I'm going to be really brief. First, um, I'm glad to hear about the plovers. Uh, I, every time I kind of giggle every time I hear about the plovers, only because I think it was the 300th anniversary book is actually a recipe for plover pie. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to crack a joke and ask, there's enough plovers to make a pie now. Um, I did want to mention, you know, we're summer, yeah, you know, hey, you got to be able to laugh. Um, you know, uh, it's summertime, I hope people get out and enjoy Scarborough because it's absolutely gorgeous this time of year. And uh, hopefully they partake in uh, visiting some of our local restaurants because they're all great. Had a chance to go down to Bailey's, uh, uh, the Bay Tent, after we passed the, uh, the agreement, the contract agreement, and they had that fully running and it was working awesome. And it was actually free. <laughs> so it's not that they're charging, so that which people were concerned about, but it was free, and then you tip the yeah. LA guy. So it was great, and it worked awesome. So um, I thought it was a great night. And you know, the only um, call that you get as a counselor after 15 years, usually, it's like, for some reason, there's a lot of citizens that think that we're relationship managers in the sense that we're there to kind of negotiate arguments between neighbors. And so this week, of course, I'm getting the phone calls from the neighbors. Those who agree with the fireworks ordinance and those who disagree with the fireworks ordinance. And my only recommendation is uh, maybe you should walk up and introduce yourself to your neighbor and solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, defer my time. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank the Scarborough Police. Uh, I'm one of the people who did sign up for the code red notices and. Um, if you're interested in getting notifications from the police department on any particular issues in your neighborhood, you can also get storm warning notices. There's all sorts of things you can get through Code Red. Um, I live not too far from where that largest heroin bust in Maine happened, and I did get, I was sitting at my computer working, and I got this all of a sudden text came across my computer, and my phone started buzzing to uh, go into lockdown. And I was like, what? Um, but it was, uh, thankfully we have that in town and I um, think if you're interested as a, as a constituent uh, of ours, please contact the police department, they'd be happy to walk you through how you can sign up for that, it's real easy. Also, uh, Operation Hope is looking for angels during the day um, and an angel is a person who's willing to put in the time and effort to work directly with um, persons who show up at the police station looking for help with addiction problems. They make phone calls and are advocates for folks. Um, they, but during the day is really busy and it's, I'm, I, I would love to do it. I work regretfully, but um, it, it would be very rewarding uh, if anyone has time and the energy put into that. It would be very welcome. I should just add, Chief, um, Chief Moulton is going to be reaching out to the business community, taking really a page from the old call division. You know, you had local businesses oh, right. and employers that would support their employees to respond to calls. We're hopeful that local businesses might allow okay. some of their employees to be angels during the day. So, nice. um, cool. And then my last thing is, um, it, it's really. Uh, I've been out talking to a lot, a lot of people recently on another quest of mine. Um, and I just wanted to clear up some misperceptions regarding the role of school funding formula. Um, 
Yeah, the school funding formula with the state, I don't think anyone's particularly looking to change it. Maybe some tweaks here or there, but changing the formula is not on anyone's radar per se. However, I do, I'm going to put a plug in for, you know, it does make a difference though how much money is going in at the top of the funnel, so to speak, and would increase the amount available even to a town like Scarborough, which will eventually be um, one of these schools that, uh, excuse me, one of these um, school uh, departments that will just be minimal, what we call minimal funding. So um, I just wanted to make sure that anyone who's listening uh, understands that, um, yeah, school funding form is not going to change, but make, putting in more money at the top of the funnel would be huge, even for a town like Scarborough. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I think I'll take a slightly different tack today or tonight. Um, Certainly for me, the, the past week or so, with all the events that have been happening have just been really sobering. But sometimes out of issues like that comes some, some positive silver linings. And a couple of things I'd just like to say. I think the chief of police in Dallas is just amazing leadership in that community. And on that, I encourage people to go out to the Scarborough Police Facebook page. The amount of support that the local Scarborough Police Department has gotten from people who are walking in with food trays, they're stopping officers on the street. Um, I, I sure hope that as, as a nation, as a community, we can come together like that. So I was really proud of Scarborough for how they reached out to support our police department. So thanks for all of you that did that. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds like um, yeah, I, I guess I'll just um, uh, say, you know, happy summer. It's nice for the first time in my um, public career, as it were, to not be fighting about budgets this time of year. So I certainly do appreciate that. It's been a very enjoyable summer for me so far. Um, I, I, um, I also would like to just take an opportunity to say I know tensions run high with uh, certain hot button issues like fireworks and dogs and things like that, but let's just remember we're all in the same town, we're all neighbors, let's just keep our heads calm and let's, you know, um, if there's something that needs to be tweaked and adjusted then I think we'll get to that point, but, you know, we don't need to escalate this into something that it's not. Um, and let's just be civil to each other and enjoy the rest of the summer because we'll have plenty of opportunity in months to come to have debates and discussions about many, many different topics. So. Thank you. Uh, I, I think you're all familiar with Mike Shaw, the DPW director, does a terrific job for us and I just wanted to let people know he's, he is working on additional cop posting ideas. Uh, we will probably have an uh, energy committee meeting uh, in August uh, to further advance those. So that's uh, uh, that's uh, going to be potentially an additional element to the composting that we uh, have put in place already. Uh, I saw an article in the Press Herald a few weeks ago that, um, and I'll just read you a brief part about it. It, it, it said the Urban Dictionary, I didn't know what an Urban Dictionary was, but <laughs> I guess it exists. Uh, explanation of uh, eco guilt is the feeling you get when you could have done something for the environment but consciously made the decision not to. It can strike you when you walk past the sign at the grocery store that reads, did you remember your reusable bags? It can arise as you sit in your idling car listening to an NPR story on warming oceans. And it can <laughs> present itself when you notice your morning banana is sporting a sticker quote from Guatemala. Uh, well, uh, I uh, have suffered uh, composting e eco guilt for <laughs> decades and decades. <coughs> I've never done anything about it, but uh, in uh, recent weeks I have finally started putting uh, my compostable material aside and when I go down Pleasant Hill Road, it, there's containers right there and I am dropping it off so that I have gone from both eco-guilt and eco-indifference <laughs> to uh, having a feeling that I'm starting to do the right thing. So uh, I ask everyone to join all of us who are making that effort for the first time in our lives. So with that, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous and we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.